Okay, try again. Okay, try again. The subject is salvation, the opportunity to stand on truth. Okay. We started out in Hosea 2.19 when he was betrothing a group of people that had no agreement with him to be his people and that he would be their God. We know he's talking about the Gentiles. So we turn over to Paul, who is the apostle of the Gentiles, or the people who had no uh, covenant with God up until Paul was sent by God to reveal to the Gentile people that he has not extended it to the Gentiles. So then in 2 Corinthians 11, just like it was in Hosea 2, there is a betrothment. Paul says, I betrothed you to him as a chaste virgin. 2 Corinthians 11, 2. Can you hear me now? And they can hear you. They're saying they can hear you. So, we're going to take off from 2 Corinthians 11, 2. For I am jealous over you with the godly jealousy, for I am inspired you to husband, to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now, you notice the language. In 2 Corinthians 11, 2, he says that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now, listen to this. Back up one sentence, for I have inspired, inspired you to one husband. One husband. But so far, salvation can only reach God <coughs> through the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the cross. But when you look, there are 34,000 plus denominations building churches, but not according to the doctrine of Christ. So in the 19th century, there came a belief called Buddhism, Buddhism, which means any, any person that believes in any God has a right to be divine. But that can't be true. So religious pluralism is the idea that any doctrine, any, 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 any understanding, Buddha, any understanding, Latter-day Saints, any understanding, it all lead to salvation. Salvation by man has so many faces and so many doctrines that it makes the cross, Jesus crucified and resurrected, and the payment for sin not even relevant. So salvation has so many faces now. Everybody is right. 34,000 denominations. I can't stay here. It's called the kingdom of the cult. But I want you to understand that we need to have an understanding that the pinnacle of Satan's work is moved into the church and Satan at 666 is going to move into the temple of the living God, opposing God, saying he is God, doing lying signs and wonders, and that the spirit of the Antichrist is already gone out now to set the people up in the church to worship Satan instead of waiting for 777 to Jesus the Christ to come. They send every kind of doctrine of devils that you've ever seen. Jesus is going to come and he's going to take us out of here and fly us somewhere. But the Bible does not go along with that study because in Revelation 21 and in Revelation uh, 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 five, it tells you there's seven seals and that each saint and each believer that has their name written in the Lamb for the life has to be sealed with the seven seals. Seven meaning spiritually complete. But we are skipping and we are missing six, six, six is when Daniel in, the, in, in Daniel 7 and in Daniel 9, when Daniel spoke of the man that was going to come through the political system and say, peace, peace, 
and only 12 chapters starts in Daniel 7, and God gave Daniel a vision about the day of the Lord. Do you understand when I say the day of the Lord what I'm getting ready to teach? So in the day of the Lord, Revelation 21 explains to you that when Jesus comes back to earth, he's going to stay on the earth a thousand years while Satan is bound. Whether you know it or not, you're going to have to in time, if you were birthed by a woman, you're going to have to one time or other stand before truth so that you can resist it or you can will to have it. But there's one thing about God. He willed that all his children be saved. Mm -hmm. So one time or another, you're going to have to stand before truth. But now let's get back on the book. The book says that when Jesus teaches for a thousand years, him and his saints, when he come in the clouds, there are two things he's going to do. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter says, he's going to destroy the Antichrist that's going to come and oppose him, but saying he's him, doing lying, signs and wonders, second Thessalonians, the second chapter, it says with the brightness of Christ's coming, he's going to destroy the Antichrist with his coming. Well, if, 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 if Christ is going to destroy the Antichrist at his coming, why are there so many people getting in bed with the devils of doctrine, the doctrines of devils, when they're supposed to be waiting and be betrothed, according to Hosea 2.19, and according to 2 Corinthians, why are so many people sleeping with another God when it was only Jesus the Christ that died on the cross? Why are so many people having so many doctrines when Matthew 16 says, that Jesus said himself upon the rock that I asked the question, who does man say that I am? And Peter Petro says, I say that you're Christ, son of the living God. And he said, upon this revelation that you knowing who I am, that heaven has revealed to you who I am, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Mankind has took the job out of Jesus' hand and they are building church on the doctrine of devils and on the doctrine of lies and lying prophets and lying apostles. And it's being done by Satan to blind the mind of the people so that the people will not be true to Jesus and be betrothed to Jesus, but will get in bed with Satan. And there are sincere people going to church, standing in the pulpit that have transform themselves to teach doctrines of devils that is not even in the Bible. Don't know nothing about the generation of the fig tree. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Don't know nothing about the approaching day of the Lord. So when you go into Revelation, let's really, let's really discuss this because there's a special attack that's happening on the church. Because 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 said the God of this world blinds the mind. Let me tell you how he does it. 2 Corinthians 11.14, Satan transforms himself. He's really going to transform himself at 666, the number of man, Revelation 13. And 2 Corinthians 11.15, his ministers transforms themselves. In 2 Corinthians 11, 13, his false apostles transform themselves, but they are not apostles of Jesus Christ. If you want to know an apostle, look in the Bible. The apostles of the Bible was Holy Scripture inspired by God. Every apostle in the Bible, you know, belongs to God. I don't know who these apostles are today. Whatever message they have, they got to get it from the Bible if they're going to preach the truth to set you free. I don't know who these prophets are today. I don't care if they want a title they say for prophet. I don't 
Raphael. I know God chose Obadiah, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Amalekiah. I know God chose them, and I know God gave them a message for me. But what these apostles are titling themselves today, and what message that they have, I don't know. But I know what the Bible is saying. And the major double whammy that Satan is waging against the church is that he has infiltrated the church. He's no longer in the nightclub. He's no longer at the drug house. He's already got those people. He says, if I want to be worshipped, I got to go to the church. Mm -hmm. While the church is sitting up having church, being satisfied with running and speaking in tunes, no love, full of envy and strife and jealousy, to the point that we have 34,000 different denominations with 34,000 beliefs and faces and 34,000 doctrines that we are going to be the church. And part of them are saying we're going to be raptured out. The other part saying we're going to be this and the other part saying we're going to be that. But in the Bible, there's only one person ordained to build the church and he has a doctrine and his doctrine is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he said, I'm the way and I'm the truth and I'm the light and there's a narrow gate and few find it. And we got all these faces and all these denominations, all these theology and doctrines and we got so many faces for one doctrine of the Bible that will set you free because man has no power in himself without the provisions of a holy and living God by the cruc crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Man has nothing that can set you free. You can go to church as much as you want to, but knowledge is not salvation. Knowledge is not salvation. Relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ, living by every word, proceeding out of the mouth of God. That's salvation. But you getting a bunch of knowledge and going to every revival, and because you church of God of prophecy, Pentecostal, Seventh day Adventist, Jehovah Witness, any of the 34,000, if they are not on the doctrine that God gave Jesus to set you free, you are wasting your time. But yet and still, we believe that all roads, wherever we worship at, wherever we have church at, all roads go to one place. If that be true, if that be true, then Jesus didn't have to die. Salvation is the chance and the opportunity to stand on truth. That that truth may set you free. That it may pay the ransom of the problem of the separation from what God created from his own hands. And the devil, Lucifer, separated himself from God in the first earth age and became Satan. And then sold sin to one third of the children of God, Revelation 12, and took one third of God's children that he didn't even create. God didn't create Satan. God created Lucifer. Sin created. Pride and iniquity created Satan. And so by the time you get to Genesis 2, God is beginning the second earth age. And when he begins to begin the second earth age, by the second chapter of Genesis, he's telling you about a tree that's in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Do you stop to understand what that knowledge of good and evil will do for you? What the knowledge of good and evil and you obeying the knowledge of good and evil will do for you will give you an appetite for yourself to make yourself your own God. So you can go to church as much as you want to. But any other knowledge other than the gospel of Jesus Christ won't set you free to be divine will not make you a child of the king, will not betroth you to marry Jesus the Christ, will not give you the divine love of Galatians 5, 22, 23, will not give you the provisions of the promise, 
will not ordain you for the life of the gospel and the knowledge of Jesus Christ to shine from your heart. This new war that Satan has waged against the saints, the ones that have the blood and the word of the Lamb as their testimony, this new war that he has waged, he has waged it from inside the church by putting his apostles, false apostles, by putting his false prophets in the church. Let me give you an example. Go with me to Revelation, the second chapter. And God has examined seven, seven men spiritually complete. God has examined seven churches for us. God did it. And God gave us a report on each church. But there's something in the hearing that I want you to hear today. And I want you to come to an understanding about what Revelation is about. It's an unveiling. It's an unveiling about the approaching second coming of Jesus Christ. You can't go around that. Revelation is about the second coming of Jesus the Christ. So now look. When you look. At Revelation, the second chapter. And let me find my bearing. Revelation, the second chapter. And we want to look at one of the churches because there are seven examples of the church. And we want to look at the church of Tyree. God has examined Tyree. Let's see what God has to say to Tyree. Second, Revelation, the second chapter in the 18th verse. Let's see what God, I'm going to read it for you in your hearing. You're not going to have it, but I'm going to read it for you. And unto the angel of the church of Tyree write these things, said the son of God. You notice Jesus is talking. Who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass? I know thy works and ch charity, which is love, and service and faith and thy patience and thy works. And the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou suffered that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. And she repented not. What does he have against Tyree? She has allowed a false prophet to come in and teach God's people. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. And she repented not. Behold, I will cast her unto a band and them that commit adultery them that commit this false teaching, this false prophet, and all those that commit the worship of this falseness to these false doctrines, to these doctrines of devils, I will commit with her unto a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts and I give unto every one of you according to your works. Salvation is not you having revelation. He says, I give you according to your works. And what your works have done in the church of Tyree, you have let a false prophet in that calls herself Jersey Bill to seduce and teach my people. And so not only is he going to pass judgment on the prophet that is false, but he's going to pass judgment on the people that sit up and reject the truth when they have such a great, a great opportunity to be set on the truth by the spirit of truth and the word of truth called the Bible. They reject it to follow behind doctrine. Doctrines, doctrines of devil. I, yeah, I know too, you can turn me off if you don't want to hear me. I'm only talking to those God assigned me to anyway. So it's all right. I'm going to preach the Bible. 
because I want you to understand that we are not in a season, according to uh, Ephesians 6, we are not in a season where God required the people that he sent Paul to, to understand that not, he not only chose them, but he predestined them. And that he gave them, he ordained the work for them. He placed them in the workmanship of his son, Jesus Christ. He said, let the knowledge, he prayed, Paul prayed, that the knowledge of Jesus Christ will shine from your heart and that you walk worthy of what he called you to do. Then he told you in the sixth chapter, he said, I'm going to need you to become soldiers. I'm going to need you to put on all the provisions that salvation from Jesus to Christ gives. And I need for you to understand that you need to stand against the wiles of Satan. What is the wiles of Satan? The wiles of Satan is 2 Corinthians 11, 14, where he's moved into the church and, 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 and transformed himself to an angel of light, where he's moved into church as a false prophet, where he's moved into the church as a false apostle, where he's moved into the church to blind the eyes and the mind of the church so they won't even understand what truth is, but salvation from Jesus of Christ is your only opportunity to stand on truth. If you get in bed with any doctrine of devils, you're going to pay the penalty. Let me prove that. Let us go. The second. John. And see what John has to say. Second, let's see what second John has to say. Let's look at second John 9. Let's take off right here. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father. In the Son. Let me read that one more time. Whosoever transgressed and abided not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. Watch this. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, Receive him not unto your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. Did you, did you get what John had to say? He says, if you own any other doctrine, if you abide in any other doctrine, you have neither the Father nor the Son. He said, if anyone come to you with a different doctrine, the doctrine of devils, if anyone comes to you with anything different, receive him not unto your house. I want to show you something in Revelation. I want to show you just how equipped Satan is and just how he takes crowds down. And just how mean, when you look at them as mere men and don't take into account of what spirit is on that man that's spewing, what spirit is on that woman like Jezebel, who is a false prophet, standing in the pulpit, preaching to people that are open to receive knowledge, but is spewing lies out of her mouth, which is not the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So the people in the building should not receive Jezebel to preach these dark, false doctrine, but people, crowds of people are willing to follow anybody, but we forget that words are seeds, and that these words planted in you. Listen to this. I got to read this. Revelation 16, 13. Revelation 16, 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth. Of the dragon. Where did unclean spirits come from? Where did the unclean spirits come from? Come out of the mouth of the dragon. You know who the dragon is, Satan. And out of the mouth of the beast. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. 
Where did the unclean spirits come from? Out of the mouth of the false prophet. Out of the mouth of the dragon. Out of the mouth of the beast. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Where is the evil spirits coming from? Out of the mouth of the false prophet, the false minister, the false apostle. Where are evil spirits and the evil doctrine of devils coming from? Out of the mouth of people saying that they are sincere about Jesus of Christ. Oh, he going to come and fly us out of here. The Bible does not say that. And you are putting too much on that doctrine. Because if Jesus didn't say that, he can't set you free. He can't empower you to do nothing. This past Sunday, said we'll see you Sunday.